How many images will be remembered or become symbols of the war in Iraq long after the words are forgotten? Yes, the work of those responsible for some of the most memorable images covering the main news events of 2002 are going to be shown at the World Press Photo Exhibition at the Royal Festival Hall from today. With us this morning, two of the British award-winning photographers, Peter Dench and George Georgiou. Welcome both, and congratulations as Thank well. You. Thank you very much. We're going to have a look at some pictures uh, and, and float some up onto the screen so that the viewers can see them, some of the award-winning photographers. Now, this one, if we can bring it up, this one's yours, isn't it, Peter? Tell us a little bit more about it. it. Oh, we've gone past it. No, there it is. Yeah, That's one of George's, George, isn't it? George's. Oh, that one there. Okay. Um, well, this is one picture from a two-year project mm -hmm. um, profiling the alcoholic drinking habits of the English. Um, it's been a lifetime researching it, but two years photographing it. And this was a character I met at the Epsom Derby. Right. And uh, did you set the camera up and, and wait for a reaction, or were you just chancing past? You know, um, just... Chancing past. Mm -hmm. I saw the setup. I saw the, the, uh, the bunting. Um, caught my eye. I started approaching him, started taking pictures as I walked towards him, and he just started laughing hysterically. You caught, you caught in, in one image so much of British summer <laughs> culture, really, haven't you? You've got the Union Jack, the thermos flask, the huge car park, the alcohol, as you mentioned, and... The Cardi. And the, the Cardi. Cardi. <laughs> and the Cardi. The Cardigan makes it. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, I really Nothing wrong with cardigans, Mike. <laughs> George, perhaps we can see your award-winning... Um, photograph now. Actually, you took a series, didn't you? And, and that was what won an award. T tell us a little bit about your photo. Right. I mean, this is part of the portrait stories series, and, mm -hmm. and the work's in Serbia. And it's, it started three years ago, after the conflict. So I've done this post-conflict piece, and I wanted to look into, and you know, we, we seem to be moving into conflicts on a yearly basis. And I, I just wanted to see what happens afterwards, uh, the reconstruction, how much effort mm -hmm. we're putting in. And so I concentrated on the Serbians. So this is a Serbian woman going down an escalator, looking at your lens, thinking, mm -hmm. why are you taking a picture of me? That's right, yes. Um, did, did, did she look a bit cross, actually? I mean, do you get permission for, to, to capture your subject like that? Or did uh, you, no, I don't mean, I'm just waiting there, and uh, she's seen me. But people are very uh, paranoid. They haven't, haven't come out of the Milosevic mm -hmm. regime. They're not quite sure whether you're spying on them, you're part of the government. They're not sure who you are. But in, in that picture particularly, um, y you really caught what the, the mood of, of the country and a sort of... In one, well, she's going down for, for starters, mm -hmm. but also this in an empty space, mm -hmm. of emptiness behind her. Yeah, I mean that was very important for me because as a country, they and as as a people, they feel very isolated. They feel very paranoid, and I mean that's in a way represents that for me. Mm. Mm. Peter, what sort of responsibilities do you think a photographer has when taking a picture? I mean, both your subject and yours too, George, were taken really without their permission without their, perhaps mm -hmm. without their knowledge, although he must have recognised that you were taking a picture of him then, and yours too. I mean, do, do you feel that you ought to, I don't know, lay down some parameters when you're taking pictures? There are some people that you won't take a picture of. Um, I, th I think it's up to every photographer to judge the situation he's in at that time and decide whether um, the picture will work better if he asks permission mm -hmm. or, or whether the moment is, uh, is there to get immediately. And, um, I think that's the responsibility. It's in the surprise, the really, that makes the good picture, isn't it? If it's staged, perhaps it's not so immediate. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think if, you're, if everything's staged, then you learn nothing about the world. Mm. I want to take a, a look at a, a very, very striking picture from the exhibition. Yeah. It's on our plasma here. I hope we can get a close-up of it uh, also. Uh, this from the aftermath of an earthquake. Talk us through it, if you would. Well, this was taken by Eric. Uh, he's an Armenian-American, uh, which won the main prize for the single image. And what's interesting about this, this choice is that this is an earthquake in Iran, which doesn't really make the news in, in the West. Mm. But as, as it's an all-inclusive award, and Iran is a major disaster, it's, I think it's a, a very interesting... And he's holding his father's, father's trousers and his father's just being buried in that, that grave behind him. That's but right. For, I mean, for this boy, his world has collapsed. Um, everything that he held dear mm. has disappeared. It's a very fine line though, between sort of capturing a moving image and, and intruding on, on private grief, isn't there? It is a fine line. It's a fine line. But um, through experience, you learn, learn to tread it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people who understand that line are the ones who produce, presumably, the strongest pictures. The stronger the awarding mm -hmm. pictures. Thank you very much, both okay. of you. Thank you.
if you'd like to see Peter and George's uh, photographs and all the other ones as well, um, you can see them at the Royal Festival Hall on London South Bank. Mm. And entry is free. No charge. Jolly well worth a visit. Good news for people staying in the UK during the bank holiday weekend, apart from possibly the weather. For the first time ever, more than half of Britain's bathing waters have made it into the good beach guy. Water quality has gone up.